in continuation to my previous lecture series in the module pharmaceutics subject dispensing pharmacy under pharmaceutical sciences today's lecture is on a thorough perception on liquid dosage forms i am dr hema choudhary professor in school of medical and allied sciences k r mangalam university today's topic a thorough perception on liquid dosage forms as already mentioned in the introductory lecture a drug is rarely administered in its pure form rather as a dosage form in order to administer a drug in a form of dosage it is important that we understand the purpose the first purpose is mainly for administering small quantity of drug which is difficult to weigh and measure also a dosage form is convenient for ease of administration by a selected route and further the dosage form also helps in greater accuracy of a dose in order to continue with the development of a dosage form and understanding its purpose it is very important to understand that a dosage form is designed mainly to get the predicted and reproducible therapeutic response from the medicament also the dosage form is meant for easy handling transport and storage a dosage form also helps in improving physico chemical stability by admixing it with various stabilizing agents coined as stabilizers it also helps for improved palatability and acceptance by adding suitable organoleptic additives thereby enhancing patient compliance the main advantage of looking into the advantages of liquid dosage form is mainly with respect to enhancement of bioavailability of dissolved drug and also to get a faster response a liquid dosage form is advantageous with high dose accuracy wherein the drug is uniformly distributed in the liquid phase a liquid dosage form also helps to be easy for swallowing and also useful for children that is for pediatric use and for elderly that is for geriatric use a liquid dosage form are clear preparations so it facilitates visual observation and it gives confidence to the patient regarding the quality a liquid dosage form is also a safer means of administering irritant drugs otherwise an irritant drugs takes longer time to undergo dissolution in the stomach on oral administration A liquid dosage form is also important because most of the ingredients which are added in the formulation can be easily dispersed for example in the preparation of hydrogen peroxide solution In addition to various advantages every formulation has its limitations so in order to understand the disadvantages of liquid dosage form there are few to be mentioned one among those are the number of drugs are poorly soluble and hence it becomes very challenging to disperse or distribute uniformly a drug in a vehicle so this requires special techniques to solubilize them into a clear preparation the second disadvantage with respect to design of a liquid dosage form is its stability most of the liquid dosage forms are less stable chemically because of its insoluble state of dispersion also a liquid dosage form has an improved contact of soluble drug with the taste buds so it becomes very challenging in order to make the formulation for irritant or unpleasant drugs because the taste buds can feel it faster when compared to a solid dosage form the next disadvantage of with respect to liquid dosage form is its bulkiness these are heavy containers or larger containers and it is not very user friendly the next disadvantage is with regard to measurement of dose accuracy the dose is generally measured by household measures that is a teaspoon a tablespoon or a dessert spoon so the dose accuracy will not have accuracy with respect to measurement 
Now, looking in depth with regard to designing and development of a dosage form, especially in context of liquid dosage form, one has to look into various criteria. Before that, we understand that a dosage form is generally formulated or designed by taking the main model drug under study along with various additives. In order to understand the development or the designing part of the liquid dosage form, one has to have an overview or an insight into the various additives which go in making a liquid dosage form. In order to understand the concept of pharmaceutical additives, we need to generalize certain concepts. The first and foremost, the additives which is to be considered as the formulation ingredient, one has to be clear that the additive substance should be of little or no therapeutic value. These are going to give purpose only with respect to the purpose what they are meant for. Rather, they should not indulge or infringe into the therapeutic property of the formulation. Also, the quality of an additive while selection should be that they on addition to the formulation, in addition to the ease of production, the main purpose of them being facilitating the formulation, it should be very focused that they maintain their physico-chemical stability and improve the patient acceptability and also functioning of the dosage form for the purpose they have been administered as a drug delivery system. Finally, in selection, it should be very clearly borne that when you talk about an additive for liquid dosage form, the additive can also be synonymously referred as an adjoint, an adjunct, a necessity or an excipient. In context of liquid dosage form, generally the terminology which is preferred is an additive. Now, with respect to exclusively liquid dosage form, we need to understand what should be the mindset in selection of each additive for a specific use. So, first and foremost, in devising a liquid dosage form, one has to select a vehicle. A vehicle is the solvent system in which the drug is dissolved or dispersed. So, we're talking about vehicles, we have to understand that the vehicle is chosen on various criteria. The first concept of selection of vehicle is its palatability. It has to be acceptable by the patient because it is on oral administration. Second, it should be non-toxic. A vehicle should itself not bring in problems in the formulation. It is a facilitator which is added in a formulation. So, the most important criteria should be its non-toxicity. Then, the next criteria in selection should be its availability. It should be cost feasible as otherwise the formulation will escalate in its costing. So, the most preferred vehicle or the universally acceptable vehicle would be water. Because water is physiologically acceptable and it is safe and it is universally available. There are drugs which are very challenging which are partially or insoluble in water. In such a context, the selection of vehicle should be considered in addition to water a second solvent system which we generally refer as co-solvents. So, the criteria of taking a co-solvent into account should be that since it is a liquid dosage form, the first and foremost criteria should be its miscibility. So, the solvent system generally preferred would be water and in addition, in case there is issues or challenges with the solubility concept, then a co-solvent can be brought in. The co-solvents could be multiple. The other examples of vehicles which can be taken in devising a liquid dosage form are aromatic waters, these are water preparation, water based preparation having volatile oil ingredients. Generally, these are preferred for its dual action. One is vehicle property and also the reason of it giving preservation in the formulation. The next solvent system which can be considered are syrups. So, since syrups are sweet preparations, they make the preparations more palatable. So, syrups can also be a choice of vehicle in case of liquid dosage form, especially for pediatric preparations. 
The co-solvency can be brought about by using solvents such as ethanol, chloroform, propylene glycol, glycerol, polyethylene glycol and rarely mineral oils or vegetable oils. So, these solvent systems are selected considering the toxicity profile and the ratio which is decided is considered keeping its safety. The second choice of additive which are to be added in the formulation of liquid dosage form are surfactants. As already mentioned, there are drugs which are very challenging with respect to solubility. So, surfactants is a broader coin term, in term which can help in bringing about good solubilization of the model drug under consideration. A surfactant can be considered to be used as a solubilizing agent. Now, solubilizing agents are specifically those agents which have an HLB value ranging from 15 to 18 out of the HLB scale. Sometimes, the surfactants can be taken into account in devising a formulation for increasing the wetting property of the drug, thereby enhancing the solubilization. So, sometimes the surfactants which are added are wetting agents. Now, wetting agents are those which have an HLB value between 8 to 10. Also, surfactants can be used as emulsifying agents, especially when oily vehicles are considered. In order to enhance the miscibility criteria, emulsifying agents can be added to make the preparation clear. In such a context, the examples are either oil in water based surfactants having an HLB value of 8 to 18 or water in oil type of surfactants having an HLB value between 3 to 6. We have a choice out of surfactant category anti foaming agents. It would be important to note that anti foaming agents are also surfactants with an HLB value between 1.5 to 3. So, being a liquid dosage form and being clear preparations generally, a surfactant may be of solubilizing value or wetting property or an emulsifying property can be considered in the formulation design. The third category of additives which are generally to be considered in the formulation of liquid dosage forms are hydrocolloids. Now, these hydrocolloids are generally viscosity enhancing agents. Now, viscosity enhancement is important especially in some types of liquid dosage forms like linktasis which are generally viscous preparations and also this helps in maintaining consistency of the formulation and also helps in accuracy of dosage measurement. The viscosity enhancing agents or in general hydrocolloids can either be suspending agents or emulsifying agents. Some of the examples for suspending or emulsifying agents are acacia, tragacanth, etc. These are generally out of the natural gums category. We have fourth class of additives which are to be considered in the formulation of liquid dosage form. They are referred as antioxidants. Antioxidants are the agents which helps in preventing oxidation. Antioxidants are generally added in order to enhance the life of the preparation by avoiding oxidation phenomena. Some of the antioxidants which can be chosen are sodium bisulfate, sodium metasulfite, butylated hydroxy anisole or butylated hydroxy toline. Out of the choices, one can pick the formulation chemist can pick the suitable antioxidant agent and incorporate in the formulation design. The next additive of choice to be added in general in the formulation of a liquid dosage form is a complexation agent or a complexing agent. A complexing agent is important and the examples in this category are either citric acid, tartaric acid or EDTA. The next class of additives which has to be incorporated in liquid dosage form is a preservative. As we are dealing with liquid dosage forms, liquid base is a source of microbial growth. In order to have a better shelf life, 
and to enhance the stability of the developing formulation and in general the developed formulation addition of preservative as an additive is important some of the examples of preservatives are benzoic acid sodium benzoate etc the next additive in class is coloring agents or in general we can club them under organoleptic additives color is a important sense perception so as the formulation is for human use color flavor odor are the sense perception uh, requirement by the patient for better acceptability so dealing with coloring agents these are the agents which make the preparation colorful the choices are caramel cochineal or amaranth the most important point to consider here is any additive out of any of the categories already mentioned are chosen they need to be having one basic important property is that they should be all water soluble in order to make the preparation clear the next additive in line is a flavoring agent generally the flavoring agents are added are aromatic waters or in general flavored syrups flavor is a very important criteria in development of a liquid dosage form especially meant for internal use talking about the next organoleptic additive or in general an additive for liquid dosage form is a sweetening agent sweetness is important for improved palatability and in general for better acceptability especially when we are dealing with liquid dosage forms meant for internal use in such a context the examples are sucrose syrups or sorbitol now sorbitol can be a choice especially if the formulation is being designed for diabetic patients talking about the next additive in the category is buffers now buffers are very important ingredient which are to be considered critical in the selection because the buffering systems which are going to be selected either from carbonates base citrate base they are going to influence the final ph of the formulation so ph of the formulation will be helpful in maintaining the stability and solubility of the formulation other additives which are to be considered in the development of liquid dosage forms are tonicity adjusters now tonicity is an important parameter wherein we need to have the match with respect to ph of the biological environment so especially when we are talking about nasal preparations ophthalmic preparations or injectables one has to bear in mind that tonicity adjuster has to be incorporated the most preferred tonicity adjuster is sodium chloride now since we are dealing with liquid dosage forms and already mentioned that though some drugs are easily water soluble there are challenging moieties because most of the drugs being synthesized or developed in modern era are belonging to class wherein they are either partially soluble or insoluble in water so in such a context the formulation chemist has to overcome such challenges and has to be abreast with what are the various ways of solubility enhancement so since dealing with liquid dosage form the concept of solubility enhancement techniques has to be touched upon the solubility enhancement techniques could be that we can go in for enhancing the solubility of the model drug either by selecting the correct solvent so the first criteria should be selection of the solvent or the vehicle system with utmost care and for that one has to do the solubility studies and establish whether the model drug has sufficient solubility in the solvent system which we prefer which is generally water the second criteria for solubility enhancement should be that solubility is actually defined in context of the parts of the solute to the parts of the solvent so a drug which is partially soluble can be made to be more soluble provided we increase the parts of the solvent to that of the solute so the volume required in order to dissolve the solid can be taken into account and we can plan the formulation design 
by considering that the enhancement of the volume could impact the solubility of the drug under study. So, generally the dosing can be considered that the dose of liquid dosage form which is generally administered is in either 5 ml or multiples of 5. So, in the same context the dilution parameter can be considered provided the efficacy of the formulation is not affected one can enhance the volume of the solvent and thereby affect solubility in a better way. The other way in order to bring about solubility enhancement could be by using a combination of aqueous and non-aqueous solvents. Generally non-aqueous solvents are not taken individually the reason being that most of them are physiologically not acceptable due to their toxic nature. Toxic I mean to say when used in very large quantities. So, the criteria can be that the non-aqueous vehicle or the solvent can be taken in lesser proportion and a major proportion can be the aqueous base provided the miscibility is considered. The next approach in order to bring about enhancement are as I already mentioned one would be with respect to co-solvents that is aqueous and non-aqueous solvent combination or combining two aqueous solvents wherein we can improve the solubility of the drug under consideration. So, generally the co-solvents which are considered can be alcohol systems, propylene glycol or glycerin. And one very important criteria to be mentioned here is that if the liquid dosage form is for internal use, one has to understand toxicity and sometimes when the liquid dosage form is meant for external use, the selection criteria can be taken in a broader way because it is for external use only. The second criteria in understanding solubility enhancement technique is we can go about by enhancing, solubilizing using hydrophilic surfactants. The surfactants are already mentioned to be as solubilizers. So, such surfactants will enhance the solubility. The third concept of enhancement of solubility would be by complexation. So, we can complex the drug with complexing agents like cyclodextrins and thereby influence its solubility. So, the complexation can also be brought about by using sequestering agents. The next concept in line for enhancement of solubility is hydrotropy. Hydrotropes can be prepared or used in order to enhance the solubility of a drug. The next concept could be pH adjustment. Already as mentioned pH has an influence on solubility. So, using suitable buffering systems pH can be modulated and solubility be affected. And the last approach under solubility enhancement could be by chemical modification. All drugs are either weak acids or weak bases. So, corresponding salts can be prepared and salts generally have better solubility as compared to the parent drug. Thank you.